What's the difference between an incident happening with a fully charged battery and a fully discharged or storage charged battery? Well, it's actually fairly significant. And if you are traveling with batteries or leaving them around your house or anything like that, being aware of the difference in the chemical properties of a fully charged battery versus a discharged battery is really important. Um, that's because when it is fully charged, when it's at 4.2 volts per cell, there's a ton of potential energy inside of these batteries compared to when it's brought down to storage charge level. As someone that travels via airline, I think it's very important to make sure that we are, as, as a community, are being really, really responsible with the way that we travel with our LiPos. And one of the most important things that I want to see people doing more and more often is storage charging their batteries before they get on a plane. Now, a lot of you are going to be like, well, TSA doesn't even check. Well, yes, you're right. The Travel Safety Administration, that's the United States governing body for like, you know, the people with the blue shirts that let you on and off planes. Um, no, they're not going to be checking. Um, so that's especially why I want to put it onto us to say it is up to us to be responsible with um, the lipos that we are traveling with and the, the, the levels of storage that they're with. Um, and to demonstrate the difference in chemical properties, I'm actually going to take two full, just fine lipos, ones that I'm going to retire anyway, and I'm going to just cut them. One of them is going to be at four point two volts per cell and one of them is going to be at storage charge and you're going to see the difference of the reaction um, of the chemical properties of those batteries at their different voltages. Now the reason that I'm going to do that is to demonstrate that if you have a problem with a battery while you're on a plane it's going to be much much less significant of an event um, to have it at storage charge and that's going to hopefully encourage you that maybe we should be paying attention to storage charging batteries on the fly. <laughs> Okay, so I've got two batteries here that I'm already going to retire either way. This, you can see this connector is really messed up. So I'm charging this one up to full voltage. And then this one um, is being retired for a bunch of different reasons, including the balance lead. And uh, it is already at, this is basically storage charge for six cells, 22 volts. Um, so we're going to be doing our little experiment with both of these. So we'll let this one charge up and we'll go do the storage charge cut on this battery. So like the point of this is that you wouldn't like have this cut happen on a flight, but if there was a chemical reaction that happened, this is kind of simulating what could happen. Uh, so I'm gonna cut it in the worst case scenario where I'm gonna go across all the cells, and that's gonna show you what happens when a storage charged LiPo has, a, has an issue, and, and that's gonna be kind of an analog for uh, what would happen on a flight. So here we go. Pretty uneventful, right? I'll try to get a little more here. I'll take this a step further. So that's pretty well mangled there. You can see from a from a storage charge, it's pretty much a non-event, right? Not a lot of chemical reaction going on. Um, so now let's swap out, grab the fully charged one, and show you what the difference it makes. Okay. So now this battery is charged at 4.2. Pull that off. Okay, so now this one is fully charged, so you're going to see a pretty distinct difference between <clears throat> the storage charge battery and this one. If I can cut it deep enough. Hey, just before we cut this battery, Feel free to go ahead and give a like and a comment and a subscribe if you're not subscribed. It's a super big help for the channel. Thank you very much.
That's just one cell. So that was only one cell of the entire battery. So let's try to get a couple more. So that's pretty insane, right? The difference between a fully charged battery getting damaged and a discharged battery or a storage charge battery getting damaged is 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 significant, right? If one, you if you were on a flight, you had your bag in your overhead, and one of those two chemical processes started happening, I know I would much rather have the 3.8, and that's why I take a, I'm very intentional about discharging batteries when I'm on trips and when I'm traveling. I bring this. This is the ISDT F d 200 storage discharger that's a bit of a mouthful um but this is just it's just this brick this like super solid um storage discharger that has an xt60 input and when i travel i just bring this squid cable with xt60s on the end which i can put a link to if you really want but um and i plug in all of my batteries at the end of a trip so if i'm at a race or i'm at um, you know, filming somewhere, uh, or, you know, just traveling with, for FPV, I, br I have these two things with me no matter what, and then I can just push a button and it immediately starts to discharge this battery. Up here, I can change the amount of, uh, amps that is being drawn out of the pack. And on the bottom side, I can also change the voltage that it's going to be discharging to. So you really have to pay attention to the voltage. If it, it has fail safes to like... So like if I say I want to discharge this battery to 3S, but it's a six cell battery, it's going to prevent me from making that mistake by making that sound. So then I can come in and say, okay, oh yeah, you're right. It really is a six cell. And then it will start discharging with that beep. And this battery is already pretty low, so it's already showing low. But beyond just controlling the ISDT FD200 with the little buttons here on the face, you can also control it with an app. So this, when it's powered on, emits a Bluetooth signal that you can connect to with your phone where you can start and stop the process of charging and discharging. You can set the current, the amount of discharge that you want it to do, the voltage of the battery that you want it to discharge to. Um, and you can also override the low voltage setting. So if I want it to discharge all the way down to, you know, to well to flat or to like 3.5 volts per cell or something like that i can change all of those settings within the app um, for the fd200 So just to give you a sense of how loud this is, like I'm speaking at a normal volume here. I'm trying to have the mic equidistant between me and the, the fan. Um, and then this also vibrates a little bit. It's really pretty much impossible to show you that, but like... But um, it has these little footies here on the bottom that uh, perfectly keep it stabilized on the vest so it doesn't like move around anything. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit noisy, but it's not overwhelming. ISDT does make two other, or another discharger. It's a lot smaller and it does a lot less current. I've had those be a little bit flaky. They don't seem to have the best like build quality. Um, but I'm finding that the FD200 is a much, much better piece of technology. Like it almost feels like an Apple product. Like it's just like this brushed aluminum. It's great. So I know that this has not been like the sexiest topic in the world to cover in the world of FPV drone racing and drones and all that stuff. Uh, but it is something that I wanted to bring up. 
obviously the best way to discharge your batteries is to just get out and fly, right? You can discharge at 80 amps, 100 amps, all right there at the same time, but sometimes that's not always an option. You damage your gear, you ran out of time, you ran out of daylight, um, your production ended and you don't have, and you had extra batteries charged up. Um, you know, you just get back to the hotel that night or right before you get to the airport, just discharge all your batteries so that you are being a safe and responsible citizen of the air. In addition to responsibility from storage charging for flying, it also improves the long-term health of your batteries, right? If you're leaving batteries sitting for a week, two weeks, a month um, in full charge, the, they're at a chemically unstable point. Batteries want to be stable at the 3.8 volts per cell or so. This is lithium polymer batteries especially um, because that is where the chemical reaction that's going on inside of the battery is not causing further damage to the battery itself at 4.2 volts that starts to degrade at a much faster rate and can limit the long-term longevity of your batteries. Now, that being said, we fly multi-rotors. We don't, we crash a lot. I think that our batteries are at much greater risk of having physical damage before chemical damage. Um, but an added benefit of being on top and being responsible with your batteries is that the long-term health of your batteries is going to be in place. The FD200 was sent to me by Pyrodrone, um, so I'm really grateful for them to have sent this out for review. Uh, they agree with me on the 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 importance of being responsible with uh, lithium polymer batteries, uh, so uh, thanked them. And if you want to support myself and uh, Pyrodrone themselves, the link in the description for this product is an affiliate link. Um, I know, whatever. I'll uh, I'll stop pitching you on that, but uh, it's that would be a big help if that's something that you're interested in pursuing. So thank you very much for checking this out. Um, again, appreciate uh, all of you guys being out there, staying safe, and I hope that you learned something from this process. Stay flying.